that's a pretty apt way of, I guess, describing where we are in this story just by the two different levels of the one we were in before, and now we've gone from our ordinary life to literal hell. <laughs> don't do don't do things by halves in this game. Nope. Yeah, also note that even after just 10 minutes of starting the game, we are already on Act 2. You're... Yeah, the game's really inconsistent with its chapter length. Yeah, you'll, you'll see very clearly, as from this point on, we're going to do a whole lot of combining of multiple chapters, because this and the one right after really highlights that inconsistency. This is your old barrio, right, Johnson? Then you can be my tour guide. Me? But I quit the whole demon thing ages ago and written my memory's absolute rubbish. Oh, I'm sure it will come back to you in no time. Relax, amigo. This is going to be an adventure. Our very own road movie. And the best part is, you never know what's waiting around the bend. At least, at least these two make for a good buddy dynamic that a road movie would be perfect for them. Yeah, yeah. So here we are, already at the gate to the underworld. Also the place where we fought eight hearts during Travis Strikes Again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wasn't kidding when we were going through that in, in the previous LP, and we were like, we're literally going through Shadows of the Damned in reverse. <laughs> Like, nope, 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 shut the door, shut the door, shut the door. Also, a brief few seconds where I completely lost track of that this was supposed to be something where you press a button, and I just kind of stood there for a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Hope that's another thing that you get used to. Um, I, I kind of bring in the illusion of, like, when and how this was recorded. I basically got this oh, used copy of the game for 15 bucks. I popped it into my 360. Played through it, opened up Elgato, just recorded everything I could. Right. Whatever happened, happened, and was taken into the first pass. So, <laughs> hope you like seeing... Fuck it, we'll do it live. Yeah, hope you enjoy seeing some fuck-ups that I could not be bothered to really fix. <laughs> LPs of quality. <laughs> Honestly, it's the kind of quality that this game ultimately deserves. <laughs> kind of janky, but eh, good enough. Johnson, yeah. What the hell is that thing? <laughs> Holy cow! I don't believe it! Willie! That's one eyed William! I mean, considering most of his body is an eye, like, that's pretty Friend apt. Of yours. Are you kidding? William is my aunt's first husband's adopted son from the Ukraine. Then you are practically brothers. <laughs> what does that make you? Absolutely nothing! <laughs> But yeah, that's our checkpoint system. A what? The flaming turd. <laughs> yep. Shit Just there. like this game. The underworld be a <laughs> nah, that's too harsh. That's too harsh. It's not a flaming not a turd. Take a look over there. It's a well-polished turd. It, on the wall. It's a dried like one after all the stench has been gone after several <laughs> weeks. Like your senses are like your olfactory senses are not being horribly assaulted by it anymore, but you're still kind of sad that it's still there. At the end of the day, though, easy to pick up. Yeah, I'm sure you'll have your chance. They hate my light shot. Leaves a nasty rash. Okay, so we're gonna have to blow up the exploding. Oh no, wait, this isn't Resident Evil. Before. No, of course not. No. Corpse wagon bringing out the corpses to fight. Speaking of which. Also, at this point, we are suddenly told oh, yeah, we have a secondary weapon. It's a goddamn shotgun. Yeah. The, the weapons in this game are kind of. Eh. They're limited, but at the very least, when it comes to video game shotguns, this one's all right. It's it, like the, the the shots don't evaporate like three feet away from you from your gun. Yeah, it's it's at least comparable with RE4 shotguns, which is like if you're gonna copy that game, you at least best get that part right. Yeah. I mean, the best uh, gaming shotgun will always be the shotgun from Fear. Oh, I was. 
I was just thinking that, especially because before recording, I was replaying some of Fear, actually. <laughs> it's so goddamn good. Uh, every time you fire, it just sounds like God clearing his throat. Here's some gift material. Yep, just uh, stick Johnson in and jiggle it back and forth a wee bit. If someone on something awful had made, uh, has not made that into their own avatar at some point, like, I'm gonna be very disappointed. <laughs> Try to take that as a challenge. Or don't. Why am I your mother? And no, I'm not gonna make that my avatar. Doom Guy Hayabusa <laughs> is going to stay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm perfectly happy with my uh, horrible Nier slash Dragon Guard one, thank you. Yep. Paula, come back! Oh yeah, Paula's still around, except kind of not, because Fleming Paula. likes to fuck around with Garcia that way. <clears throat> no, no, it's, it's totally her. We're going to pick her up, and then we're going to go back home for hamburgers. Exactly. She, like, she makes some real good ones. Oh yeah. Oh, gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, these things are like demon catnip. When I was little... Johnson! Do I take this strawberry? Yes! Jeez, excuse me for having a little fruit fantasy. Hey, Johnson, uh, Johnson, I don't kink shame, but s seriously, we, we need to keep this... We need to have the strawberry set aside for something important. Hey, if he wants to go off and drill over fruit, that's that's on him. Yeah. Hey, so yeah, we got our strawberry, strawberry feeding it door. to the door. Again, another thing that we got to do in Travis Strikes Again, which was obviously <laughs> one of the few things I still remembered from this game when I last played it in 2011. Yeah, the giant fruit also kind of reminds me of God Hand a, a little bit as well. I love it! <laughs> which is ironic, because I'm pretty sure, like, strawberries are Gene's favorite fruit, considering that it is the one that, like, gives him the most health refill. Um... Hang on, was it not oranges? No, oranges oranges were pretty high up, but I, yeah. I'm pretty confident it was specifically strawberries. That there's probably it's, it's been a long time since like uh, oh dear. Yeah. Meanwhile, in Clive Barker's bedroom. Also here, have some tequila. <laughs> Gonna need it. Yeah. It's funny we just be kind of like going off on all these silly tangents and like. We're getting bombarded with bits and pieces of what our core gameplay is, and this is, I'd say, the ultimate culmination of it, and most important. Yeah, this is this is the thing that a lot of people had big issues with when it came to the game, and honestly, I can't say I blame them. Yeah, I mean, even at parts during this game later on, I did have issues with it, but it's... The funny thing is... Of all of Suda's original ideas for what, what he wanted this game to be before EA went and EA'd it up, <laughs> uh, Darkness was the key part about it. Like, for fuck's sake, the original game was going to be called Kuriyami. Literally, shit. Darkness. <laughs> yeah. If only there was some way to shed light on the situation. Don't and that's also why when when we were going back and forth between this and Kuriyami Dance, you'll realize ironically that Kuriyami Dance actually has little to do with darkness in the way that this or the original game concept wanted to portray. Yeah, it's and, and that is more of a thematic kind of thing, it's, whereas in yeah. this it's like as literal as you can get. Yeah, because Suda's idea was that he didn't want like enemies within the darkness that you have to fight like in I guess the more common traditional horror sense like no he wanted it to be like darkness is the threat yeah kind of like Alan Wake in a way but yeah the dark well, presence maybe a bit that. less maybe a bit less um, of a physical threat less of a physical threat less something that you would need to like solve with guns because yeah. that was obviously like part of it in, in Alan Wake, the whole, like, life was a factor, but you still ultimately had to uh, finish it with a gun. Because after all, West Westerners are all about guns. Like, you can't deny that. Papa, Papa Riccatello said so. What, do you think Suda was going to disagree? As someone who lives in the UK where we don't really have guns, um, y'all are crazy for him. 
demons do love their darkness. You know, video games may not be the cause of gun violence in this country, but I'm pretty sure they're a symptom of that core behavior that still encourages it. <laughs> well, there's that whole argument that art is a reflection of the society that goes around it, but, you know. Yeah. That kind, kind of feels like a bit of a waste of an argument when we're dealing with a game uh, which has weapons which are um, variations on the word boner, so... Yeah, yeah. Showing some of the tequila in action, showing the light shot, which is... It's funny, we mentioned Alan Wake, but the funny thing is, like, Alan Wake was actually not going through my head at all when I was, like, playing through this game for whatever reason. <laughs> Even though it's, like... This literally... This actually did, in, in terms of, of like time and release this did come out a year after Alan Wake yeah it's kind of like uh, Takashi Miki does Alan Wake which I would love to see to be honest yeah it'd be uh it'd definitely be a, a lot less like light Dave and Lynch up its own ass <laughs> well <laughs> I, 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 I I wouldn't go as far as to say like that Alan Wake is like so far it's up its own ass I mean, like, I mean, I, I, I think the reason why I say that is because I still remember, like, the, like, the trailer and promotions for American Nightmare and Mr. Scratch. Mm. And there is yeah. that one, oh, he, there was that one trailer where, like, near the end, like, Alan Wake's actor as Mr. Scratch is basically just, like, does a little mockery of Alan Wake's original ending. It's just yeah. that condescending, it's not a lake, it's an ocean. There's no way to <laughs> okay, it's yeah. not up. It's it's not that far up its own ass, but on the same by the same token, it's still on first nine terms with its own colon. Yeah, that's that has a working relationship with ahead. it. Also, Takeshi Miike's Alan Wake would not be devoid of it, but it would probably have its own different type of obnoxiously out of place product placement. Yeah, and there would be a hell of a lot of incest. Yeah. Dude loves it. Mm -hmm. I'm not just saying that because I saw Visitor Q again the other night. <laughs> <laughs> so, helmet dudes. Yeah, helmet dudes. You can't blow them off, thankfully. But, like, it, you're not going to do it with just the regular boner. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's, just, let's just get all the inappropriate laughter out now. Ah. Uh. Fuck it, I really am just struggling to go with the, the, like, with, not only do I want to go with, like, the boner dick joke counter in the corner of the screen, but it's also going to be real awkward if I ultimately don't go through with it, and we keep referring <laughs> to it as a possibility throughout this what whole fuck fucking playthrough. <laughs> <laughs> damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, it's kind of fucked that way. I imagine HR Giger's gonna have a few words to say about this guy. We're also gonna have a few words to say about that guy when we actually get to him. But anyway, Ooh, here's segue. here's Pyramid he Pyramid Head's nephew, Conehead. As seen on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, these these guys can they look fairly unthreatening, but they can shred you in seconds if you let them. Their their projectile it has way more homing properties to it than you realize. Because it's like you... Or it should. Yeah. Because it's like... Because it's obviously at this point telling you, hey, it's important to do a dodge roll, but you kind of don't realize until after a few times that like when it wants you to dodge roll, it wants you to dodge roll at the last possible instant. Because trying to just keep strafing to the left or right and rolling doesn't change the fact that it'll still curve towards you. On the plus side though, the dodge roll does have really generous uh, invincibility frames to it. It does. Like there's some interesting things regarding like this game in terms of like gameplay mechanics in combat, but it, it kind of all goes back to everything else that we're gonna like eventually describe with this game, but it, it definitely feels like there's not as big of an incentive to really go crazy with those things that you can consider unique. Like, some of the things that I've done, like, you can stun enemies with the light shot, get in close, and then, like, press the button to, like, 
you know, do a specific QTE finisher, which admittedly, that's like, that's totally like an RE4 thing, you know, you stagger the enemy, you go in for the, you know, for the contextual melee, but it feels so weird and not that fun or useful to use in this, simply because you're not dealing with the same level of crowds like you have in RE4. It's also the fact that the aiming always feels a little bit off, like you're either overcompensating or undercompensating with it. Yeah, even though like this is this has the whole laser sight kind of aiming system with it. Yeah. And and even with this, like I'm I am going through this specific part as inefficiently as possible because I realize I might as well show some of the more interesting contextual stuff, you know, like hmm. like the melee after stunning enemies with a light shot or hitting or hitting them with a back fist when they're behind you. And here we have now our upgrade system. Pretty much the one thing you always want to like focus on immediately, as you'll see, is to dump a couple gems into your boner. Hmm. And maybe some in health. But it's the sort of thing where, you know, your weapon variety and selection is so limited already. Like, you essentially only have three weapon types. You might as well just stick with the one that you basically start with for the majority and make the rest yeah. very situational. Yeah, towards, well, basically from about, the, about a third of the way through the game, um, the third weapon that you get was basically all that I used for about 90% of the game. Yeah. You're going to need convenient access to I mean, the, the shotgun just winds up being very, very situational. It does, for me it was. especially with some of like, because even though we have technically three guns, they do get upgrades that ultimately change a lot of their form and even functions. But that does ultimately result in, you know, like you said, making them even more situational, ironically, than they actually end up at the start. Yeah, they and there's a few things to be said about the, the various types of weapons that we get, but... We'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah. Makes sense. For now, we got more darkness to wade through, but this also introduced that, you know, there's there's these little hearts that you could pick up to uh, to extend the time that you can be in darkness before your health just gets totally sapped. Yep. And later on, there'll be bits off the beaten path that you'll need to really just go looking for. Yeah. Especially if there are, like, red gems or something hidden in those. And because of yeah, how, it's, it's... how linear this game is, like a lot of games from this era, it's very... It is very insistent in pushing you forward at all times, even to the point where if you realize you missed something, you can't go back. Yeah, there's, there's not really much in the way of side paths in this game, but when there are, in inevitably, it's... You can kind of get pushed away from them more than anything. Yeah, definitely. Also, that's just another way of highlighting the fact that I don't get every red gem in this playthrough, even though I get most. Yeah. Anyway, I... have exploding barrels. Because, you know, mid-2000s action game. There has to be. Yep. But of course, we're in the underworld, and demons hate light, so they're light barrels. Don't question it. Yep. Don't, 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 do not question Papa Riccatello's decisions. <laughs> These demon pubes are blocking the door. Hey, look up there. There's a switch glowing the same color. Hold on. What? Where else have we seen that color? You reckon taking a walk on the wild side might bring this whole situation into perspective? Now is not the time to listen to the Velvet Underground. Jesus. Jeez. Like, you use your words, damn it. Be, like, be <laughs> to the point. D d just don't be that guy who has to make everything into a pop culture reference. Or, he said ironically. Or dick jokes, but unfortunately we're already at that point, so we might as well keep going. Yeah, that's a lost cause. About not even like ten minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one's dead. Yeah, and we, and we can actually blame that more on the villain. Yeah. You're talking about Rick Taylor, right? Fleming? Yeah. Ah, cool. Fleming Riccatello. <laughs> Still better than Bobby Kotick. Yeah. Allegedly. Well, I don't know, depending on... 
Okay, so admittedly, I'm kind of, like, not as up to date on, like, when this, uh, on the details of this or, like, when it happened, but, uh, you remember that moment in Travis Strikes Back where Damon Riccatello, like, part of his backstory, he basically described how he beat the shit out of Dr. Juvenile because he was so frustrated with, like, the sort of game direction that she was, like, trying to, like, push for Damn Dark Knight. And, yeah. and basically how it just painted him as, like, just someone that abuses women. Hmm. The real John Riccatello may or may not be too far off from that allegation. <laughs> not, oh, dear. Not the... <clears throat> Okay, admittedly, not the physically beating them, but definitely, like, the <laughs> sexual abuse kind. Yeah, I... Well, this, th this, this took a turn. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, and and the thing is, because, like, I remember just seeing it offhand, like, when I was kind of just seeing, like, a lot of pe other people's impressions of Travis Can Strikes Again in? and kind of doing the whole dissection of its themes and characters and whatnot. And I remember that being briefly brought up, but I'm like... Ugh. What's that fucker's Fiction and real life aren't too far off, I guess. He's literally got a finger in every pie. We're surrounded, G. So here's where the darkness starts to get annoying. Yeah, especially with what you just saw, where I shot a literal light barrel, and I forgot that this wasn't the case. But when I saw it again, I was hoping that it would have like created like a sort of pocket space of light. Like, even for a brief moment. But no, it's just treated as a literal exploding barrel in the most traditional of senses. Yeah. You, you do get something later on which does kind of act like that, but it's more of a... Almost like a set piece. Yeah. It's still... The part that still makes this all the most disappointing is that even though some of its, like, ideas and potentials still aren't fully realized... The whole darkness as the main thread really is still like the last vestige of Suda's original idea and the fact that it even made it in in some ways a miracle. Hmm. Another red? Yep. One, uh, that is a red gem that is very easy to pick up even without realizing it just because like, f fortunately they are the type of items just like all the other pickups that are basically magnetized to you so there's no need to go and physically touch them. Yeah, the game's pretty generous with that I'll admit. Oh, absolutely. A little segment right here where, you know, you know, various linear games from this time frame obviously did a lot of tricks like this, as you're about to see. But I at least appreciate it from an atmospheric sense. Assuming, mm -hmm. assuming YouTube's compression hasn't fucked it all up, but um, it's a lot of heads. Well, it's, I mean, I've seen more, but yeah, you know, yeah, it's not bad, I guess. Don't any demons try to challenge Fleming? You know, like a coup? <laughs> yeah, right. Do you know what happened to the last demon who tried that? No. Neither do I, G. All they found was a shish kebab with two ears, two eyes, two kidneys, and two... Uh, never mind. Thumbs? And two penises. Wow, that's... I know, demon anatomy is very wild. Someone is trying <laughs> to bring down the house. Surprisingly, only three balls. Huh. Must have been lacking some. No, they're 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 just born that way. There's the the said the sense of symmetry and asymmetry is all over the place in demon kind. Makes sense. Perfect timing with that opera singing, shaking, and now we get a little advertisement about where that came from. <laughs> Almost as if it was intentional. That corpse is reacting to the darkness. Light this place up before it spawns more demons. Yep, more reasons to be concerned whenever darkness shows up because it also doubles in some situations as creating enemy spawners. Yep. Where did I need to go? 
Let's well, see, you're using the um, torch attack a hell of a lot more than I ever did. That's only because I very specifically remembered I still had it during the beginning, and I'm still in that mode of I might as well show it before I unconsciously like devolve it into like my usual tactics. <laughs> if anything, like one thing I actually kind of wish like I did uh, like early on and kind of didn't realize until halfway through was the whole idea of shooting out the demon's legs, going up to their heads, and then just stomping the shit out of them. Because, yeah. cause, like, for every, like, stomp or multiple stomps, like, a white gem pops out, and, like, there's the feedback from all of that is just oddly satisfying. Yeah, the game's kind of weird in the, you know, special kills don't really get you anything extra for them. Yeah, and, like, you know, so, some of them are... Yeah, you know, like they're sometimes they're like efficient, but not the most exciting. Other times, like the head stomping one that I mentioned, is just like always satisfying to do. At least the they're pretty much unique for every enemy that you can do them on, which is quite good. Yeah, and when you do the head stomps on the really big enemies that are worth a lot of gems, you know that that also really helps with the rewards. Yeah, because that's like also like another thing. Uh, obviously, like, I don't go out of my way to get every single red gem or, like, maximize on white gems. But the funny thing is that this game has quite a number of glitches in which you can, like, farm infinitely for those resources if you so want. Yeah, I know one point in particular that you can do that, but I never did it for more than, like, five minutes. Just got bored. Yeah, I... I considered it briefly, but then I, I realized I wanted to stick as close as possible to my no edits, first pass, goes approach with recording this. Like, the only time you really see edits are, like, when I die and have to go back through a checkpoint to get to where I want to. Or two times where I actually get hopelessly lost like a dumbass, but you'll see wh when those are. What am I talking about? This is what caused those tremors. It's a melody of death. Oh my god. 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 Must be kind of hard to do ballet pirouettes when you're half motorbike. When you're like some really half ass bayonetta cosplayer. Like this came out before bayonetta. No, after. What's up? Yeah. Hmm. Are you of that? I gotta say though, I I feel a really really odd disconnect when I watch Ophelia like dance while singing opera because those look that particular dance just does not feel like it nice fits with what her vocal cords are doing. Yeah, and also it it looks kind of janky. Yeah, just because of the motion capture, I suppose. Also, here's the not Garador, I guess. It's kind of like the closest <laughs> I can think of. At least it's not Dr. Salvador, because otherwise it'd be an insta-kill, and that would just be, like, super tense and stressful. Uh, maybe uh, Bella Sisters, but even uglier. Yeah, but I say Garador just because its weak point is on its back, but instead of using sound to learn, which was ultimately more interesting than this is, uh, yeah. at least it is still a matter of, like, getting it to charge at you and exploiting its weakness. I mean, it's something. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass, but it's something. Yeah. Just because of, with the, the rapid movement and the janky aiming system, you never really get much of a chance to punish it for anything. Yeah. And this is the sort of thing where, if you're like me going back to this for the first time in a while, you get confused as to whether or not you're supposed to dodge roll to get behind or just use the light shot, which is infinitely easier because it always turns it around. Yeah, especially, you know, with a lot of games today, your first uh, instinct is get behind it yeah. and then punish it. Yeah, like... Rather than, oh, wait, I can just shoot it differently. Yeah, dodge out of the way, like, as, like, your first response. source of great power, but also an exploitable weakness. Talk about wearing your heart on your sleeve. Which is funny, because there'll be a boss that does exactly that later on. Yeah. 
Man, this game really did just ultimately remind me that as I get older and like more knowledgeable and savvy of like the tricks and like the ideas that like go into designing games from like a mechanical standpoint and such, it really does make like the sort of like veiled excuses for how, you know, how they justify gamey things being like believable. It makes mm. it that much harder to actually believe when, even even when it's in situations like this where you're literally in the underworld where darkness is everywhere, like light barrels. Oh yeah, that's that's just red barrels without actually being them. Basically, yeah, wearing hearts full of like collected human blood on uh, on the outside of their body. Yeah, that's just you know, big glowing red weak points in any other game that would be like that would care less about trying to hide that. Yeah, and they are literally red and glowing. Mm-hmm. So wonder Konami doesn't sue. Yeah. Mmm, <laughs> that fellow looks like a VIP. Very important pendejo. Something like that. Fleming gives I gotta use that more often. Very important oh, yeah. pendejo. world of the living in style. Yes, hi. What does the V stand for? <laughs> yeah, Pendeo. <laughs> it just reminds me how like there's a, a, a guy that I like I I know online that's like in Brazil, and he and even though like he's good at like uh, speaking English, he always loves to just like abuse the hell out of stuff like puta and Pendeo or culo, just just because oh, like we kind of like part of like a circle that just always loves to talk shit at each other because we know we can take it. I recognize those words. Yeah. <laughs> I'm multilingual when it comes to swearing. Everyone is. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what more do you need? You know, fuck off. Fuck you. Where is the toilet? <laughs> it's like, that's literally all you need to coast your way through about 80% of the world. Happy birthday, Kisama. I'm coming, baby. But uh, every time I, I hear that these days, I just keep thinking, Timmy! <laughs> and now I've ruined about 50% of Naruto for everyone here. Let's find some darkness that gives us a clear shot at the switch. Honestly, they deserve, oh, come on, pe they deserve it to be <laughs> ruined because it's fucking Naruto. People still watch it. They just refuse to admit it. They're the... They continue to watch it because they have just horrible Stockholm Syndrome to their trashy shonen anime. Yeah, I can't say much. I still have a fondness for Bleach. Man. I could At least I admit it. <laughs> yeah. I could I could never get into Bleach. Like, especially when, like, even, like, in junior high and high school, I was, like, so not into Naruto. That like there are other people I, I knew at school that were like, well, I'm into Bleach instead, and like, I remember a guy just lending me the first volume of the manga, and I was like, eh, whatever. Like I read it, didn't, yeah, didn't think much of it. Obviously, it was the first volume, so it was like not far enough to get into where it supposedly got to its peak, and also to where it got really, really bad. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing about Bleach because like. It kind of, the problem is it essentially plateaus, but after reaching what was at the time a really high peak, um, of course where that peak starts and ends depends very much on the viewer, but, yeah. you know. But yeah, I'll always still have a fondness for it. All I know is that like so many anime viewers are like, Probably the kind of people that just shamelessly eat at the worst fast food joints because shonen anime is that. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're talking about. I only watch shows like Speed Grapher and um, I don't fucking know what I've got on my shelf. Uh, Lane, yeah, that works. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, I actually had to go look at my anime shelf there for a second. I was like, <laughs> shit, what's, what have I got that's actually um, acceptable for, you know, assholes? <clears throat> yeah, like, my 
like my only like physical anime that I own are complete like DVD sets of Yu Yu Hakusho, which I I still like, and uh, Gravion. <laughs> That's um. Uh, fuck you! I like Gravion. I know, no, I, I, I know it is early 2000s Gonzo fan service central, but fuck it. Giant robots. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, that's literally opposite ends of the scale. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like what, one's a shonen anime by the guy before he went on to do Honor x Hunter. And then the other is giant robots with tons of maid and guy, maids and gynaxing. Yeah, it's, it's like saying that, you know, my favorite two movies are um, Beaches and Sallow. <laughs> it's like, a bit different, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we're done with that first level. Now we're going to go on to Act 2-2, two two, which is a boss fight, and, the, and part of the reason why so many of these updates are going to be combining multiple like chapters into one you'll see how quickly cannibal carnival goes and a little pro tip for someone who might have you know kind of in the position i was played it when it came out and maybe not again and didn't like dig too much into i guess what little like deeper nuances there actually are because there is one major thing that made a difference when i was going through this fight again yeah i think i got this not long after it came out, got to a certain point, got really frustrated, and then just gave up on it for about a year. Yeah. Imagine a lot of people were like that as well, because there's one section later on. Oh, yeah. Well, I'd say there's multiple, but <laughs> I, th I think most well, people, when when ref when saying the oh, phrases wait. Shadows of the Damned and that one segment, <laughs> there's, there's always going to be one that comes to mind. Oh, yeah. It's a big one. Mm-hmm. It bones. Mm. And somehow we've wound up in the set of Resident Evil 6. What the fuck? With some or Akira five. Yamaoka ballads in the background. Yep. Yeah, this is where like it feels like it just channels at least musically it channels a lot of early Silent Hill. Yeah. But, I mean the fact you've got Mary Evelyn McGlynn on uh vocals who did um most of the vocal tracks for, um, was it three and four? Yeah, yeah. Like you mentioned three, and that was the one that like definitely comes to mind the most because I definitely remember stuff like the, like the the vocal themes in that. Yeah. Unless she stopped showering. Well, this is totally not hot to someone. There's a head joke in here somewhere, but I'm not gonna be the one to make it. Man. How awkward, Dang. you know, hypothetical, if there were such a thing as, like, actual monsters and stuff in real life, like a Dulahan, for instance, how put off would they be by the constant head jokes that someone makes trying to break the ice? <laughs> um, I don't know, probably about half as annoyed as they'd be at the fact that there's, like, so many monster fuckers on the internet, you know, as a whole, let's be honest. Yeah. Totally not one of those. Okay, for real, I'm not, but I am a monster appreciator. They're beautiful in their own way. What the shit? I'm not here to kink shame. That's for the thread to do. <laughs> yeah, like like this guy, I. Nah, actually. Hey, you know what? 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 Whatever you download, as long as I don't get to see the browser history, I'm a okay with it. Yeah. Yeah, or only do kings with those you consent with. <laughs> Though I don't think that what this we guy does is necessarily consenting. Well, he seems okay with it. Yeah. So here's George. That little camera, like, focus, just to remind you, hey, light barrels, shoot them. And then you gotta shoot yeah, him in the is, head. This is basically like the, the worst parts of every mid 2000s boss fight. Yeah, it is also the most classic, like, RE type boss that you can imagine. 
Yep. Run away, take a couple of pot shots, run away, take a couple of pot shots. Yeah. Mummified babies. Wait. <laughs> so, here's something that people may not realize when they first play this, and, and when they don't realize it, it actually makes the fight potentially more scary than it actually is. Notice how I'm keeping my camera focused on him as much as possible. There is a trick to this fight where if you decide to run through the maze and not keep your focus on George at all, he will just teleport to a cor to somewhere around like a corner or two near your location and then just get the jump on you. Oh yeah, this this fight cheats. It cheats, and the only way to prevent him from cheating is to keep your eye on him. Which is what I decide to do because, you know, occasionally you do have to look around or behind you just to make sure you're going where there's a barrel. But as long as you keep, like, 75% of your focus on him during the fight, you can lead him where you want to and end this fight super quickly. Of course, there's also the points like you saw where he'll grab a goat head, run off with it, and you have to find him. But that's also easy because the hut that he's in is highlighted red every time. One thing that's really annoying though is the fact that with the lighting he has a nasty habit of getting lost in it so it can be difficult to make out precisely where he is, especially when he falls down. I found that like when he gets blown away by the barrels I'd be like, right, where where actually is he? Yeah. He just blends into the background so easily. Mm -hmm. Also the blast rates of the light barrels just I, I personally believe is not as wide as it should be, especially for this fight. Yeah, but on the plus side, you don't get damaged when you explode them, so... Well, yeah, it wouldn't make much sense either, if that was the case. Hello? It's all covered Hello? in guts that, uh, like, that George is, and just, like, in this, uh, just kind of, like, hard to discern what the fuck he's supposed to be with, uh, his look. His harmonica really is like the most interesting thing about him. Yeah, it, demonic it, blues traveler. Yeah, like it it makes for a really strong like audio cue for him. Like I imagine in a much better fight that was better at like incentivizing a more claustrophobic and tense feel. Like having a fight where you don't see him for the ma don't have the potential to see him the majority of the time and all you have to hear is his harmonica would like add a lot more in like the horror kind of sense yeah I, I can imagine this being something like um the end from metal gear solid 3 yeah where you have to just track him down and, but and he's the got, entire time he's hunting you yeah because he's got like and and also because the end has his parrots which if you can hear right you know that he's close yeah But this isn't the end of George. Oh no. Yeah, there's a there's another boss fight with him later on that is maybe better, but uh, I I say it outstays its welcome way too long, but I don't know. It, yeah, I, it's it's different. I I what's really going coming to my mind more with that is like a particular gag that I I feel is up there with this game's barrage of dick jokes. You know the one. Nice. Oh yeah. Dark. Shove it into my face, chief. Trust me, it doesn't mean we're engaged or anything. <laughs> no bono. Might be a <laughs> fit, but okay. Nah, just wiggle it back and forth. It'll be fine. That head behind Johnson is super distracting. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, it is a thing, all right. Yeah. But yeah, we got blue gems now, and blue gems are our main exactly upgrades, with the first one being blue gems let me pretty significant. It's our third and final gun. <laughs> yeah, this is it. I at least appreciate the look in that it's an RCP-90. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not going to retain that look after a few more upgrades. Yeah, but again, we'll we'll get to that when it becomes important. Yeah, but is, uh, for now... Imagine we've both got a few things to say about that. Yep, but for now, we got the teether, 
And the next part of this fucked up hellscape will be for next time. Because for now, we gotta check back in with our old friend Kaido. As he is Hook now time. making his way to the Kuragani Kingdom in Chapter 3, Let Me Kiss You. Yeah, so, already, like, the start of our, our chapter here, uh, uh, we get a little check-in with Kenjin at the convenience store. You know, Kaido just letting him know, hey, like, no, we promised we were gonna have our own little, like, buddy road adventure in America, but that's gonna have to wait. I got this job I need to do. I, I just like how Kenjin, like, every picture of him there almost has that little cat smile yeah like, he's, yay this is fun yeah he's just he's just an adorable guy <laughs> yeah with a with little flashbacks of like them hanging out as kids with one particular instance in which what looks like a bunch of bullies accosting kaido they may or may not look familiar later on we don't know but i mean well i think i know but then again it's kind of hard to know because this is fucking suda yeah. Also, during the three years that Kaido was in a coma, Kenjin actually got around to watching Easy Rider. So, good on him. I'm gonna say, it's a, it is a good movie. So, if you haven't seen it out there, give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Completely unrelated to this in most ways, but it's worth watching. Yeah. Yep, so, yeah. Checking in is all done. Chalia is still hanging around. Gets upgraded from weirdo to shit brain, which, you know, that's something. Ba -ba -da -bam. So, uh, uh, so next in the journey, Kaido arrives at like the sort of border station, I guess, as it were, for the kingdom. And as they go through, you know, just all the customs and shit, whole lot of people, especially those from like all around the world, coming to the kingdom. Yeah, they definitely take uh, great pains to point out that this place is like the new melting pot. Yeah, you, like, even though it's like, you would think with like something as crazy as this being established inside Japan that it would only be for Japan, but no, it's like people going even as far as like in the West or the Middle East, like just all coming here to kind of, because that's the new dream for everyone. Yeah, kind of shades of... Um... Oh, what was the name of uh, Andre Almeida's corporation in KLR7? Life First, I think it was? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of shades of that in a way that he also wanted to make it, like, for everyone, everywhere. Yeah, although, un unlike Mr. Kuragani, though, he, he did not have the funds to actually make it a real thing, and only really he could because he found that it was a lot easier, more convenient to just invest in commercials. Hmm. <laughs> Funny that. Yeah, that was, that was always that was always my favorite part about that section, just that whole twist. <laughs> yeah. A little, a little commentary, I guess, on just like how much advertisement can just shape people's like wants or perceptions. So yeah, going through, uh, turns out the Kuragani Kingdom's got like way more intense inspection procedures than the TSA does. Yep, right down to the bone almost. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of the prison, uh, the the part the start of the prison scene a sequence in Clockwork Orange. Yeah. Shades of that. Yeah, it's the it's the one thing I always hoped would never ever actually be a thing. I mean, I mean already just like the like the, especially since you know I. I guess speaking for myself personally, I'm not that fond of like getting touched, so like the whole first game I would not be down with, but I'm also always, I'm sure like a lot of people, I'm not that big on like the whole big scan, uh, kind of scanning chamber uh, that you see in a lot of American airports. Yeah, thankfully we don't go quite that far in the UK, but I, again, I, it's been, I, I would fucking it's hope been a long so. time since I've flown. Yeah. So, you know, things might have changed, but um, yeah, by and large, we. You know, someone can easily correct me on this, but we, we don't go, you know, elbow deep in our uh, our searches. Yeah. So yeah, makes it makes it through the uh, through like the the body inspection, arrives at a waiting room, given a number. So we've gone from TSA to DMV, I guess. 
that, that <laughs> just that kind of waiting room hell. Although, although admittedly, there's a lot of couches and like soft chairs, so it's not like the like the I guess shitty folding chairs that they just like ar- arrange in rows because they can't be bothered. Yes. I mean, I mean, that- horrible rigid metal and plastic chairs that always seem to be everywhere because they're low cost and they don't particularly care if you wind up in crippling pain because of them. Yeah. I mean, at least, like, in, in this case, with what the manga is showing, I guess it makes sense, because like, they're trying to make, like, a, the dream of this kingdom the most appealing for people that want to come. Yeah, set, setting up a, a expectations, really, more than anything. Yeah. So as, so as Kaido waits for his number to get called, a mysterious old woman comes by to ask him a question, asking if, you know, she if he had seen a girl around. Not... But he, unfortunately, does not realize that, I guess, not picking up on certain social cues that he is try- uh, trying to be, like, pushed into asking uh, to look for her. <laughs> but no, he's just, like, he's so focused on getting his damn job out of the way that he he is literally like, I am not a gentleman, lady. Fuck off. <laughs> Giving so few fucks he'd think there was a shortage on. Yeah. Yeah, number gets called. Uh, gets his immigration papers and there's boards a train it's like this whole chapter is just all about like just getting through a whole lot of customs and, bu- and bureaucracy but it's it it does not get at funny enough it gets way more crazy to the point of channeling a lot more of what the castle like like what a lot of like those events were because yeah. a major a major factor about the castle for people who have not read it or or like me who can't be bothered to just do a Wikipedia search for a synopsis, um, <laughs> a whole lot of what the castle is about is a guy getting summoned to a castle, but the but the sort of governing bodies and bureaucracies establishments, wh- whatever you want to call it, all do not recognize him because apparently because his the call for him to come was sent out supposedly by mistake and trying to get the answers he needs to whether or not he actually does still need to go to the castle or not is just buried under layers and layers of a fucked up like bureaucratic system that its people cannot be bothered to really do much about fixing or like streamlining. Yeah, when, you, when you boil it down, a lot of um, Kafka's work is basically... Man, bureaucracy fucking sucks. Yeah, and w- when you actually look more into that overall, like I ended up doing, it does actually flesh out a bit more of what Suda's kind of overall influences are, because you you see his other stories, especially with kind of the focus on the individuals kind of within these crazy worlds, and it makes a whole lot more sense after a while. Yeah, I mean, in a, in a way, he's almost like the, the anti-Kafka, because, you know, like, Kafka's work is, like, the little guy being ground down by bureaucracy and the government and things against, you know, yeah, basically like, everything, the entire universe crushing them down. Yeah, like, like his whereas... Kafka's works ultimately <clears throat> result in not much of a, of a really, like, positive change or push forward for their characters. Yeah, whereas Suda is, like, the the individual taking on the universe. Yeah. And if not winning, then at least putting a major dent in it. Yeah, at the very least, they're, you know, more often than not, it's usually a result of them having to face a part of their past that might be holding them back and then just pushing forward, even killing it. Yeah, at the, at, at the end of it, it's like, I may not win, but at least I proved my point. Yeah, definitely. So on board the train, heading towards the uh, towards the kingdom, the old lady shows up again. This time with the girl that she was asking if anyone had seen, and this definitely leads to Kaido once again proving that he is not a gentleman, as he so self proclaims. That social cues? What are they? Yeah, just literally going. Did you just wake me up from my sleep because you got lost? <laughs> like. He's, he's that that rude asshole, and honestly, considering how long this job might be going for, especially with traveling, I'd be almost tempted to say the same thing. Like I, <laughs> like I'm, if I'm traveling in these kind of situations, I just want to be by myself, like 
don't do not bother me for anything i am already like going a whole ways out of my comfort zone just to be here fuck off yeah last month um i was on a like an eight hour train journey down to the other end of the country and by the time i got off the train i did not want to be around people full stop yeah absolutely but the interesting thing is that the the train looks really like old fashioned, despite this ostensibly being in the the modern day. Yeah. Like they even offer like cocktails on it for fuck's sake. Yeah, but and we're going to it's, we're going to a literal kingdom with a castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're in a different land here. Yeah, we're yeah we're we're in a land of anachronisms. Yeah, where 1930s dowagers um, walk around with. Um, Gothic Lolitas right out of Akihabara. Yep, Gothic Lolitas with a... with a massive need to ask someone to shave it. Yeah, first time you see that page. Um, yeah, that that whole it, panel just instills uh, an intense awkwardness that you can only imagine Kaido's feeling as well before you realize... Oh, oh, wait, no, no, she's got a speech impediment. She kind of... She adds S H's to S's and replaces L's with W's. So, Uber. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. You you get awkward at first for a different reason, and then you kind of realize <laughs> like what the impediment is, and then you get awkward for a whole other reason. <laughs> it's it's awkwardness within awkwardness shall await you here. Yeah, awkward as she asks you to save the castle, and not much else. <laughs> And it's like, dude, I literally just got here, um, I'm looking for a dead guy, just one thing at a time, okay? Yep. Cut to Let Me Kiss You by Morrissey, I guess. Yeah, Random not one song of... interlude breaking out. Yeah, it's it's not one that I'm familiar with, but then again, considering, like, Suda loves his random music references. I, I remember when uh, Shadows of the Dam first came out. And uh, Garcia's jacket's got uh, two references to Joy Division on it. Oh yeah, he, he's, like, a, he's a Joy Division freak. A lot, like, yeah, he, and like, you, like fi you finish any chapter in the Silver Case, and there's like an excerpt that is uh, like a series of words that is just straight up a song title. Yeah, and people are like, "This has to mean something." It's like, yeah, he's not shy about his references. Yeah, it's like. like like, oh my god, the angels and Ava Angelion, like the Three Wise Men Committee, it, it all means something. He's like, no. Gynax just did that because they thought it would sound cool. Shut up. Yeah, meanwhile, there's like. Your anime all kinds about of... Freudian mom mechas is not deep. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, and then meanwhile, there's like references to Buddhism. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, like, those ones are interesting. The Christian references are like, no, we thought this would look cool. Literally, literally as shallow as that. Like we don't know the first fucking thing about Christianity or apocrypha. We're fucking Japanese. What do you expect? <laughs> Fuck you. We're Japan. <laughs> Give us your money. Ask a best girl. Also, looking forward to the potential like a, uh, complaints of from Ava fanboys, if any. F. <laughs> F. Fuck it. If anything, it's like. Uh, like not enough people are gonna watch it to even care. We'll probably get more people that are like, "Yeah, it's yeah, we we know it. It's not that it's not that in depth." <laughs> yeah, just people coming and going. You know what? Fuck Ava. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the time someone tore that shit to shreds, and I'm like, more more people <laughs> coming to our cause. Finally, <laughs> now bring the memes. Yep. But alas, the time with our uh, oh, with our mysterious gothic lisp friend ha has to leave, and the and our train ride ultimately comes to an end. Not before, not before Kaido has to fight off a bit of insomnia as as Chalia tries to trick him into not falling asleep because the monsters will get him and some shit. And then he suggests playing Uno, which is. First off, he is so wrong. The best game to play on a road trip, as everybody knows, is Flux. Or Munchkin. No arguments there. This is a hill I will die on. Yeah. But alas, Suda is fixated on Uno, and that's not going to be the last time that we see that name drop. 
<laughs> but that's it for the that's it for the train ride. Kaido makes it to the station and goes goes all over the place looking for his chaperone, Mr. Tanaka. A, a very unique individual, completely unlike anyone else in this series. Oh yeah. Um, you will not see anyone like this guy. Just wait. Yeah, it's it's the start of like I I would say, if if Kaido breaking the sound barrier at 300 was like the first memorable like impactful moment of this manga, Tanaka's whole character and everything surrounding it is going to be the next next step in that. Yeah, this this is probably what happens with Tanaka is one of those things that's. For me, at least, it's one of the things that sticks with me. And I genuinely cannot say why. It's just, I think about this, and yeah, I think about Tanaka. I mean, for fuck's sake, just just look at his face. Especially in the last panel. You, you are feeling something when you look at that, and you're not sure what it is. Yeah, it's like, he looks like he's got a weird robot hand. He looks like he's got blood dripping from the side of his mouth. And it takes you a second, or at least it took me a second at first to realize, no, that's just, like, smile lines. Yeah. Uh, the and most... the eyes look like something out of a fucking Junji Ito story. Yeah, it's like a crazy contrast next to our pretty boy Kaido. <laughs> or Kamikaze, yeah. as this final page of the chapter is also where, is where he finally realizes, like, the extent to which he became infamous with his little stunts going at 300 that he not only got a nickname but a actual street in the kingdom got named after him by his boss yeah it makes you wonder how much Im how much impact or sway or however you want to put it he has on this place despite the fact he's literally just got here yeah but but who knows Next time we're gonna get to know a bit more, a bit more about Tanaka. You know, a little bit more, I guess, regarding the, I guess, the the current infamy of of Kaido himself. Th th things are getting way more interesting from uh, from here on out, though not Maybe without not obviously. Clearer. Yeah. More, Maybe not clearer, but definitely more. Yeah, more more characters, more bureaucracy bullshit, just just more weird, more Suda. <laughs> yes, yeah, so there is always more, and it is always Suda. <laughs>